Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday live stream. It's about one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and um, I'm feeling pretty good today. I like these days. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan. So, of course, I think we can all feel it, and it's uh, coming like a train, which is the bearish sentiment, and uh, that has taken over what's going on in the market. And uh, I have to tell you, it never surprises me what the market does. And uh, it's always fun in games uh, until the macro events come down upon you. And you have to think to yourself, ah, should I sell? Should I get out? And of course, the people that are just getting here new who made some fantastic gains are like, I'm out of here. Because that's just how tourists do it. And that's fine. So Bitcoin, down almost 3%. Seven days, 12% Ethereum. I mean, I don't need to tell you this. You've seen your portfolio. You know how bad it is. And I mean, or good, depending on what you're looking at. And we're going to see that it's mostly a red day, except for OKB. Good for them. Uh, let's see what else is good. Pepe coin is up 8%. Man, I should have 3x levered long on that one. Wow. Core is up 10%. We're going to talk about it in a second. Celestia. That's a majority of what's actually going on. And um, the question is, is why? Why is it so bearish? What's going on? Of course, there's a lot of different things that can contribute to this, but just so everybody knows, if we take a look at the time spent in risk bands, and of course these change as time goes on, but I like to use this one just to kind of give me a sentiment about where we're actually at. This is from Ben's website, and I steal everything I possibly can. If you want to steal it, uh, there's a link in the description, you can sign up for it. But just so you know, the Bitcoin is currently, because you would think like just, you know, how far we keep falling, we're, you think like, oh, like the risk is over here, right? And on the lower end, no. Bitcoin is currently in the 0.6 to 0.7 band right now, which is over here. It's still a little heated. I mean, as we've gone down and then we take a look here. Uh, this is one of my favorite trend lines. And we can see here that if we're taking a look at it and we want to, I, I know people say, well, just zoom out. It's no big deal. Sometimes you got to zoom in and get the, get the picture. This red line is the fair market value of the entire crypto market. And you can just see that we were actually at a fair market value for a little bit of time. And I think that is fantastic because we've had a heck of a run up, have we not? Especially after the ETF or for Bitcoin was actually approved. I mean, look at this, beautiful, beautiful. And now we're a little bit, we're a smidge below the fair market value line. And you can see it, we can reset it. We're not, at, we're not usually at that fair market value line. So if you think, and, and, and in actuality, a lot of the time we're below it. So if we take a look at this and go, well, how far can we drop? It's anybody's guess, but me personally, <clears throat> there's a reason why I have these rules below my enormous head. And there's five of them. And I, and I say these things because most of you guys know it. And I'm glad you guys are here because you know, not a lot of tourists are left over, which is fantastic. So the rules are don't invest more you can afford to lose, right? I mean, right now is my portfolio down quite a bit? Yes, uh, but did I do the last rule, which is take profits? Yes, I did. And this is why I'm just, this is how I am uh, when these things go down. Me and my personal opinion, I kind of feel like this is the time to start accumulating again because I was kind of getting leery on my dollar cost averaging. But now as things are starting to go, go down the tubes and they start to depreciate, I'm like, this is great. This is fantastic. So again, the rules are, I mean, they're there to remind me. And of course you can use these or you can discard them or add or take away, but these are the rules that we have. And I'm actually quite happy for it. So the question then is, well, Rob, why is this happening? Well, there's a couple of reasons, obviously. And this is a great article from Coindesk. Analysts who called Bitcoin's pre-having rally to 70K turns bearish. And there's some, there's some nuggets, some good information here. So let's just go over this real quick of why this gentleman Marcus Thielsen, founder of TEDx Research, is now saying, hey, risk off, baby, risk off. Ah. So the analysts who predicted Bitcoin's bottom in November 2022, which is a pretty good time, November 2022, essentially one, almost to the day, one year after the all-time high in November 2021, was the bottom, which is what we all take a look at as far as the four-year cycles. So everybody makes fun of them afterwards, but they all believe in them when things just kind of line up like they've been doing the last 14 years. Anyhow, I'm not gonna get into this. And the recent pre-having surge to record highs has turned bearish on risk assets. So people are saying, hey, this is just too much. I gotta de-risk. 
And this is from Marcus, 10X Research. He goes, this is why. <clears throat> Our growing concern is that risk assets, stocks, and crypto are teetering on the edge of a significant price correction. And as a reminder, this was put out today. So if that scares you, then maybe you invest a little bit too much. If that excites you, like myself, maybe you're in the right place at the right time to start reaccumulating. Just saying. Yeah. Anyhow, the primary trigger is the unexpected and persistent inflation. That is very true. I mean, the Fed's doing their job, but they just can't get down to that magical 2% number. With the bond market now projecting less than three cuts and 10-year Treasury yields, we'll take a look at this, surpassing 4.5%, we may have arrived at a crucial tipping point for risk assets. We, and he's, talk, he's talking about 10X Research and the fund that he manages, we sold all our tech stocks last night. Let me say that one more time. The guy who predicted the November 2022 bottom, I'm very well said, look, we sold all our tech stocks last night as the NASDAQ is trading very poorly and reacting to the higher bond yield. It's not just that, there's something else. We only hold a few high conviction crypto coins, probably Bitcoin, but I could be wrong. We are bearish risk assets, crypto and stock. We are bearish risk assets. And then the rest of it's kind of boring. But uh, this was pretty interesting. The five-day average of the net inflows and the spot Bitcoin ETFs has dropped to zero. Look at that. Look at all the, the inflows that it's been for quite some time. It's been hot, very hot. And now it's kind of gone down to a trickle. Is this the end-all be-all and we're, gonna, we're in the bearish market forever? No. But if you see this as I see this as, whew, dodged a bullet because, man, I didn't think I was going to be able to accumulate anything else. I thought we were going to keep going up. Well, now's your chance. Now, we always talk about buying the dips and all those things, and you can do whatever you want to do. This isn't financial advice. I'm not your dad, but I'm just saying this could be a golden opportunity. Why is this going on? What's happening? Is it just that? Is it just the macro? Well, yes and no. And also, don't forget, there's rumors of war. And when uh, <clears throat> the markets don't like the rumors of war, what they do like is when we actually get into the war zone and start fighting. It's crazy to think about. I'm not going to condone that. I'm just saying that's just what it is. Same thing happened with Ukraine, February 2022. What happened during that time frame? The entire market, not just the crypto market, entire markets dumped. And what happened? Two weeks the six weeks after that, strong was again. And it was like no big deal. So it's uh, buy the rumor, <laughs> sell the invasion, I guess. I, I think I, I, I reversed that. But all I'm trying to say is that this, there are a lot of people saying that this could be the next World War III. This could be awful. I don't tend to believe that. And of course, this is still on the table. After I ran, launched the missiles, which were actually taken down by the Iron Dome mostly. And from there, and that is it. And G Immortal says it right. Don't forget the Middle East crisis. Exactly right. So we've got that. And then, but also people are like, but Rob, what about the Bitcoin ETF in Hong Kong? That just got approved. Yeah, but here you go. This is Eric Balchunas. And uh, unlike myself, he was uh, spot on for the spot Bitcoin ETF <laughs> and called it right. And uh, he was pretty, pretty bullish on it uh, as far as the spot ETF in January for Bitcoin. Now talking about the Hong Kong spot ETF, he's not so much. And this is what he says. And he's right. Hong Kong spot Bitcoin ETFs, they've been approved to exist, but not launch. They were approved yesterday. Rumor has it launching next week, so to not compete with Dubai Conference, we'll get on that in a second. Don't expect a lot of flows. I saw one estimate of 25 billion. That's insane. We think they're lucky to get 500 million. Here's why. The ETF market is tiny, only 50 billion total. Chinese locals can't buy them. Three issues were approved. Wasera, China AMC, and Harvest are tiny. No big fish like BlackRock. Underlying ecosystem is less liquid efficient. ETS will likely see wide spreads and premium discounts. The fees 
like to be one, two percent, nowhere near the dirt cheap feast in the US. Takeaway, other countries adding Bitcoin ETF is no doubt additive, but it's nickel dime comparison to the mighty US market. I hate to say it, I gotta agree there, but I'm also a homer and I'm also a believer in the United States. So that's that part. Now let's talk about these treasuries, right? So the 10 year picked up and now we're at 4.63 somewhere around there. The treasury yield curves are supposed to look like this. Essentially, you are buying the US debt. And the longer that you go for this debt, the more the yield rate should increase, because that makes sense, right? If you're just gonna do a month, I mean, back in 2014 or 2020, excuse me, it was 0.09, two months, 0.1%. No one was buying this trash. But then, of course, we come up here and you're like, well, if you want to you know, hold on to this for seven years, we'll give you 0.48 or 10 years, 0.63 or 20. You get what I'm saying, right? But when it inverts like this, it's not supposed to look like that. It just isn't. When they're saying, OK, 10 year, we'll give you a lot more. And it starts to creep up. This isn't a good look. So we have that aspect. Then also. But people say, well, these rate cuts are going to be great. Well, just remember, there's these things called spreads. And we take a look at the 10 and the three month, again, stealing all the information from Ben's website. He doesn't mind. That when you see that when it inverts and then uninverts and gets to the, gets to the neutral part, what happens after that? Recession. Let's see. It happens in 69. It's a weird time in 73. And look at this nonsense in, 70, in 79 itself. And then we saw, again, the same thing in 89. Let me blow this up. 89. Then recession in the 90s. And then we saw this over here in the dot-com bubble. And then it uninverted because they started to cut rates. Then recession. And then here in 07, 08, recession. And actually, coincidentally, happened over here during that coronavirus thing. I don't know if you remember that. Big thing back in the day. And then recession. And then look at this. Woo. And it looks like we were turning a corner, but then, of course, no. Can't get the inflation right. And then here we are. So what happens when we get down to neutral? Probably a recession. The question is, is how long? We've taken a look at this. And the average time, we're looking at six to 10 months afterwards then for a recession. Can we eke this out? Who knows anybody's guess, but I'm uh, looking pretty positive on this part as far as to the recession all the way because we can't get to neutral as well as we uninvert. And then, of course, for the chances of a rate cut, if we look at the FOMC, the CME group, we can see that the next meeting is the 1st of May. 99.5% we're not cutting because the current target rate is 525 to 550. In June, it's an 80% chance. There ain't cutting. In July, all right, looking pretty reasonable. Then September looks like our best bet. 45% of participants think that we could see a cut. And that's where we're at, essentially in the long haul of things. So a lot of things to go over, but that's essentially why we have more of a bearish market. And again, you have to ask yourself, what does this mean for me? Where am I in this cycle? Did I invest a little bit too heavy because I got ahead of myself? Yeah, maybe that, those things happen. It's okay. Or do you look at this and go, you know what? Thank God. Because as these prices go down, I think this could be the perfect time to reaccumulate. It's up to you. Eh, for me, I know what I'm doing. It's the same thing I've been doing since the last 2022, just accumulating and sticking around for the long haul. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And then... Also, last thing I will say, not to really put people in a bad mood, but look at this from Dubai. Right now, it's, to, it's token 2049. And I was just saying just how off, just how odd everything is. This is the desert. This is what people are going through. If you go with the X, you'll see it's just flooding everywhere. Massive amount of water. And... Uh, I just thought to myself, I'm like, holy smokes, maybe this is a sign. Hey, let's let's take a look at some more videos. Oh. That was not more. That's it.
I think I was thinking of somebody else. Anyhow, uh, hopefully everything works out over there in Dubai. But again, sign of the times, I could be wrong. And then uh, lastly, before you do a little q and I had a, um, we, were, we talked about this yesterday on, this is just on X. And I thought it was interesting as, as we were getting bombed out, poor choice of words, Rob. When we were seeing some, uh, some massive declines in price action for the crypto market, and we were just as bad as today, uh, I found it interesting that uh, uh, Core, which is a uh, layer two solution being built on Bitcoin, EVM compatibility, smart contracts and DEXs and things like that, um, it was up 86%, excuse me, 84%. And then uh, to, today, eh, it's still 5%. It's pretty good for everything in the, in the dumpers. And uh, I actually had a meeting and a uh, interview. This was uh, Rich Rines. He is one of the uh, initial contributors to Core. And we sat down for about 10 minutes or so and just talked about what they are, what they're doing. I'll release that in, uh, probably by tomorrow. And I'm going to do a deep dive into the into uh, the core ecosystem and how they're working and making the layer two solutions on Bitcoin a reality. And then also, uh, I just had a meeting with uh, Jack Liu. He is the CEO of Magic Eden. I didn't know this, but because uh, I've been and we, we we're around for a long time, we kind of get uh, misconstrued as far as our data points. That Magic Eden, if you go to NFT Pulse or if you even want to go to uh, DAP Radar, but Magic Eden is the place where Everything's kind of blowing up. Marketplace users over the last 24, seven day, 30, d 30 days in one year. Well, actually not one year. Magic OpenSea does win that, that battle. Magic Eden is crushing them or is doing pretty well. And then uh, marketplace trading revenue, marketplace volume, marketplace royalties. OpenSea's got a problem there. And then uh, unique collections, OpenSea does it. So I sat down with, uh, with Jack just to talk about how this is working out and you know, what was coming on uh, in the future. So we'll release that in the next couple of days or so. We'll go from there, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Hopefully today it doesn't bum you out too bad. Uh, that's just the crypto market. And uh, we call that uh, a Tuesday. Anyhow, if you got to take off, take off. I appreciate you stopping by.